the same problem that we were seeing in the unit class. Uh, people with good intentions uh, get into uh, the role of leadership without really knowing what they're doing. And I, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying that uh, good intentions are not good enough. You have to remember that by the time the youth become a leader, yes, there is a structure of the church, of course. There is a structure of the physical and the uh, business structure of the church, as it is, uh, which is very fundamental. We know how to do that and how to do it. And, uh, we saw that in the semester we were looking at the equalization of churches. Uh, but you have to realize that you're going to become a spiritual leader. You're going to be dealing, or we are going to be dealing with the heart of men. And the heart of men is devious. It's, uh, it's a bad place. So, we have to remember that uh, the leaders that the Bible is going to give us an example I, are prepared by God through a series of circumstances that the previous, previous to the call. Previous to the call, God is preparing this man that he does, he does it. He doesn't know that he's going to become a leader. Uh, the life prior to the call is going to be mighty important. And, and I'm talking about the relationship with God. Of course, we're talking about people of God. That you realize the circumstances that you are living in. This is not a call from men. It's a call from God. It's a call to deliver people, always, to reveal life in people, or people's life, I'm sorry, to uh, encounter problems that you really don't know the answer unless you ask God to help you. In the book, in page 39, it says the challenge, the problem. Remember your leaders who have spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome uh, of the ways, the other way of life, and limit their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are calling him the victim of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. Now, somebody open the Bible there and read uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 16, please. Thank you. 
concern about that. He is trying to disciple Timothy to become a leader. That's that's the first and second epistle of John. I mean, of Timothy is is more or less a uh, discipleship to leadership. People, uh, he, if you, if you read those two episodes, it would be a good thing that you read it within the context of this that we are seeing. Uh, you see, this man, Paul, giving instructions to these young leaders to be careful, to, to try to remember the teachings that he uh, were taught to him. <coughs> When he was a young person, and uh, and uh, because Timothy was very insecure, according to the commentaries, because of his age and uh, in, the, in the the religious community, we have the tendency not to respect the young people, which is a terrible mistake. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, he talks about the spirit. Remember, he talks about the God has not given my spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, he's trying to <coughs> convey to him what he really is going to become. That's so, true. yes. I know that we're not perfect. All of us can say that. I don't know about you, I am. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Except you, but you rock. Um, but one thing that I see, that I've seen, um, this is like in, in leadership that they always tend to direct the people to focus their eyes on Jesus Christ. Which is good, but I kind of see it as a cover-up to say, you know, don't put it all on me because I'm going to make mistakes. In other words, they're kind of like going around trying to protect themselves from putting, setting the example. Well, there is a principle that I learned, and at this I learned way back. I had a professor in philosophy, and uh, he told me one day, uh, you cannot be what you don't have, right? right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you are is what you talk, yeah. more than what you do. And uh, he says, words can build or can destroy. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why a leader has to be very careful. Read, uh, you have the Bible open, open uh, Matthew 11, 28, 20, 20, 26, 27, 28, so wherever you are. Matthew. 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 So, is this class geared, is this class geared at pastors or is it geared at, at non-leaders in the, but not pastors? Well, they're both. Both. It's because uh, the fact is that you go to the Bible Institute with the idea that someday you're going to go and serve the Lord somewhere. And uh, when you're going to go somewhere, let us give an example where it's going to look for that. Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Yeah. Matthew 11. Yeah. Uh, uh, going back to your question, uh, you have to remember that whenever you're going to go, you're going to create something. You're going to create new life. That's what you're going to do. Really. You're going to edify the church, the body of Christ, always. So we have to remember that we are ambassadors. And that um, we have to. See, I, I saw in the mission field. People making mistakes. For example, I remember this couple, young couple in Costa Rica, and, and then I saw him later <coughs> in the rest, uh, trying to to convince these people that were very young boy to build inside coffee. And uh, they were living in a shack that hardly stand, you know. And uh, <coughs> and I. Uh, they look at me and says, uh, do you speak Spanish? And I said, I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, will you tell them, you know, and I said, uh, yes, I will tell them, but I said, uh, you're asking for the impossible in this moment in their lives. Please 
listen to what I'm saying. <clears throat> they are accustomed to go to the little house outside. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with them. To them, there's nothing wrong with them. There is more pressing problems. How do I get out of this state of misery that I am trapped? And they don't know that it's the result of their way of life. Because if you don't do anything by building inside plumbing and send them to hell. They go, you know, it's, you have to really be careful. Okay? Now, going back to Matthew 11, 28, 27, we start reading. 27. Yeah. Um, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except, except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the, except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Right there, good stuff. See, that, that's the, that's the, uh, he's the leader, right? Yeah. He's our leader. <coughs> and that's what he wants to teach you, to rest, to get to know the Father, mm -hmm. to get to, the leader, that's the job of the leader. Right. You're going to have to surround with people that they are hungry for this kind of teaching. Can I say something? Yes. Um, I guess referring back to this question, maybe it's not just them trying to cover up something about, mm -hmm. you know, not fo focusing on themselves, but merely saying that, you know, I am your leader, this is what I do, I focus on Jesus, so focus mm -hmm. on Him as I focus on Him. Not merely just saying that, you know, don't look at me. Yeah, well, that's a tremendous question you're asking because I don't want to get out of the subject. But let me say to this when you look at the leaders in the Bible, you see a bunch of losers before. You see Paul killing people. You see Peter doing stupid things, you know. Uh, you see uh, kings, kings doing all kind of uh, incredible things, you know. This, you see Moses murdering somebody before. You know, you see uh, uh, David and Esau, uh, it's all getting to each other, you know because they don't understand leadership. Mm -hmm. No, they don't understand leadership in, in this dimension. Now, my question, because the book talks about that, and I was starting to yesterday and today, it brings a point, it says that even before you know the guy is preparing you by the circumstances of your life, then later he's going to bring, bring you to him and say, you're going to go and do this. And the reason that you're going to do this is because I have prepared you. Please listen. Let's take one case, Moses. He has something parallel to David. What was it? Murder. Pardon? Yeah. Murder. And what else? What was David before? Before? Oh, two shepherds. Two shepherds. In the natural. Yeah. Now, the, in their lives, there are two. Okay, let's, let's take Moses first. Moses commit murder, and he has to run away. Otherwise, he's going to get killed by the Pharaoh. Little did he know. That by becoming a shepherd, he was going to learn to be a shepherd of men. Little did he know that by, in, if you read the Bible, he is driving the, uh, 
the, ch the shepherd, you know, to places, and that's when he has the encounter. Was just was Moses seeking God? Don't don't think the movie, please, okay? Don't <laughs> think. Was was he seeking God? <coughs> Pardon? No, 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 really. He was not until God. Uh, oh, really? He is there. He has been in solitude because he had to take his animals, you know, for days. You know, he was by himself with these animals and nothing else. And then God appears to him where no influence of men is around him. You see that? He was there taking care of those, those animals and all of a sudden God pops up in the bush and talks to him. Private encounter. That's the encounter. And then he asks him, you are my men. In Yuri chapter 3, he's giving him all kinds of excuses, you know, yeah. right? I can't talk. Can't. And then the Lord says to him, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you are going in my power. You are, I know that you are a loser. <laughs> no part of praise, of course, right? But if you read it that way, that's the way it is. And then he empowered him. He do a couple of things there to prove to him that he was not kidding. He lacked the ability to be a good speaker. And God provided his brother. God knows, knows what you lack of. That's why the leader has to be very careful to allow people that God sent it to him and not to yes manipulate them, but to allow them to serve with their gift. I'm going to repeat that again. You don't have all the gifts. You just have a call. And God is going to provide you. He's going to surround you. You know, that's the biggest problem in politics. So, the, the man's politics. He's surrounding. If, if the president doesn't surround himself with honest and knowledgeable and really big people that care for others, the only thing that is going to happen, happen is what is happening today in this nation. You know, we are going down. But going back, let me give you another example. David is in the in the palace. He has defeated all his enemies. And he looks from the palace that God lives in the tabernacle. <clears throat> and because he is the king, he says, it's not right that I live in a palace and God lives in the tabernacle. So he says, I'm going to build him a temple. And then he goes and asks his prophet, what his plans are. And the prophet says, go ahead. God is with you. Only that, that night, God appears to the prophet. And he says, what is that that David is saying? Well, he's going to do a table for you. He said, will you tell David, my son, that he is not going to build a house for me. I'm going to build a house for him. To remember when I got it from, what he was, just a miserable shepherd. And I made him a king. He didn't make himself a king. God made him a king. We are here tonight by the grace of God. Don't you ever forget that. Don't think that you, I had it together. <laughs> we always need to raise our eyes to Him. 
But what I'm trying to say is this. There is David, there is Moses, there is Saul. They didn't, didn't understand whatsoever was the, the thing about being the leader. He had no idea what it was. If he goes and make all the mistakes that you and I know, and then jealousy attack him because he sees that David, that David is the, the popular guy. In him. And then David had a chance to kill him. And uh, one of the soldiers of David, one of the men of David, says, you know, God is giving you in your hand. He says, God delivered me from touching the anointing of God. Yeah. God Almighty. What, what I'm trying to tell you tonight is this, you know, God is the one who's calling you. But that comes with a tremendous responsibility, right? And that responsibility has to be carried by, by you in the name of God. And remember always that you need God. And that you need help. You cannot do it by yourself. Go to Nehemiah, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. You see this born leader, so to speak. <coughs> That he was being prepared in uh, captivity with a sensitive heart for the people, a man of prayer, a man who, who when he got the news about what was happening in Jerusalem, immediately fell sad and he went to God. A man of prayer. A leader has to be a man of prayer. Now, the circumstances that prepared him was this. That he was the cup bearer. bearer. <coughs> was he not? He was the cup bearer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, to his behavior, has gained the confidence because his testimony of his life <coughs> with the king. God was preparing that. When you meditate in that passage, you see that he's got the favor of the king. Because his behavior, because his conduct. He knew that he was from the people of God. And he did in captivity the, 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 uh, a, a duty that had the total confidence of the king because the, the person that was serving the wine was, couldn't poison him, could kill the king. That's why always they always have to look happy and everything because if they look at the word, he says, what is he trying? You know, <laughs> he was costing his life. That's right, that's right. But my point is this, you know, he had learned to be a man under authority. Mm -hmm. A leader has to have the ability to learn to be under authority from God, of course. Usually, let's say, for example, in the church, you, we are under authority always. Don't trust somebody who is not under authority. Man has to be hesitant to be self will from right, you know, to just do whatever they please. And when you see that in a leader, start praying for that leader. All right? Any comments? Why? Why is? Why has there been such a emphasis pastors put on Sundays? Why? Did, why is that? I'm sorry. What was that? Again? Well, it's, I don't. I don't get this. It, there's seven days a week, and there's so much to be done. Why is there such an emphasis on on Sunday mornings? It's like you know, all hail, all rise. Here comes the King. To, you know, well, I don't, I, you know, it has a misconception, you know, the, uh, the past year is a 24 hour job, you yeah. can call it a job, but it's not a job, it's a call. It's a big difference, you know, uh, and uh, uh, the problem here in the United States is that uh, it has become a career.
the, the person leaves the mission where they have food, bed, clothes, medical care, everything is there. Right. However, they said, you can have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Isn't that, yeah. that something? I tell you because the people that go to missions, they are culture. You understand what I mean by that? You understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. It's a way of life for them to go to, go to the uh, Dream Center, stay there for a while, and then they rest their body and their whatever, they get physically rebuilt, and then they go and do it again. And they know that they cannot go back to the Dream Center for a while because the Dream Center probably has some rules, so they go to Los Angeles Mission. <clears throat> and they stay in Los Angeles Beach for a while, and, they, and then they get tired to be there, and they go and do it again, and then they go to the midnight mission. Yeah. And then they go and on and on and on. Yeah. I know people for years that never wanted to get out of there. I tried when I was the director of Los Angeles Mission, I think I have to mention this to you. To build a center in Sagos, just like the, uh, uh, the Midnight Mission built in Sagos for me. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, the board of directors told me it's too far from Skip Road. They said, well, that's the idea, <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> you know, to get him out of this environment. They, I had a factory, they were going to employ them. I had a church that was going to pay for their food. I had a, a church that was going to pay for the apartment building to have it there. And they didn't want it. Talking about frustration. And that's what you're going to become later on. People that are accustomed to sin, to have their own way, have nobody tell them what to do, when to do it, and they have to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's a prime example. At the post office I work at, there's a guy that's been staying there or out in front of it or on the side of it for, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 years or something like that. His parents have a nice three-bedroom, house less than four blocks away from that place, but he, he's got some psych problems. His brother does exactly the same thing at another, another site. He won't take his psych drugs, but instead he snorts coke, and he lays in... <coughs> See, I, 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 uh, um, I have to be very careful. For example, the other day, I took my wife to a to a Italian restaurant. And uh, she likes a cup of wine. Oh, she was there. We always were there. there. And that night they were having something there, you know. And so they brought a bottle of wine to my table. And I said to the lady, excuse me, I didn't know what it is. I said, no, 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 this is on my house. And he, she, she brought me a cup. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been sober 44 years, 9 months, and 28 days today. And the thought came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, take that cup away from me and put the bottom on the floor. And my wife has stood perfectly. No problem. Good. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I would have liked it too. Huh? I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you did that.
bird's eye view patterns, process, and principles. The term patterns, process, and principles are from Funda National. Funda. Founda. Foundational. Foundational. To understand the analysis of a person's life, patterns deal with the overall framework of the big picture of a life. Processes deal with the ways a means used by God to move a leader along the overall pattern. Principles deal with the identification of additional truths within the process and patterns that have a wider application to the leader. Everything that is happening to you in your life, God is going to use it. The good and the bad. And the other. How well do you know yourself? Done? Are you with you? I was writing down what you're saying. I was writing down what you're saying. No, no, listen, listen, this is this is the thing, you know, that how well do we know ourselves? Not that much. Not much. We are our yeah. enemies. Number one enemies. How do we discover that then? How did you discover what is in your heart? How do I discover yeah, what is yeah, in your heart? Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Ah, okay, wait, I'm going to make it. We all want to prepare. Yes, She couldn't hold it. Bobby, <laughs> how do you discover what is in your heart? What is in your heart? Think, think, because I'm going to go back. I, when, 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 I, when I read the Word of God, it, it, it you know, it just... Mm. All right, I did. Yeah, I think the way I'm looking at it is I discover things in my heart because I've gone through it. Mm -hmm. My past experience, my past, um, um, you know, encounters um, with whatever, and... So it kind of reveals to me that in my heart, you know, we, we talked about my heart is for, 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 for the uh, um, um, underdogs because I grew up being told, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that, come on, you know, that's not you, don't do that, don't do this. So I love to encourage people that, that, that people have, have said, hey, they can't do it. They're that, they're this. Hey, I would love to, to, to just, I guess that's where my heart is because I've been in that position. So I discovered that I was once an underdog. Always an underdog. Always an underdog. So, and I won't let anybody else. See, you, you, you and I don't, re don't realize how words are so powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, the leader has to realize that. The leader has to realize that your experiences, God is going to use them to mold you. For example, you don't know the pain that a person is uh, feeling unless you know what pain really is. It would be impossible. Oh, yeah. You, you are. You, the very, it's like the person is talking to you in another language. And you, he, he's saying, let me tell you, Pastor, you know, uh, this and this and that. And, and, and you say, oh, okay. And then, with all the respect to all of you, to all of you, okay, don't ever say, yeah, but the Word of God says this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that person is going to say, who needs you? What the person is looking for is, come to me, yes. mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. Yes. Some kind of sign that you really care. Mm -hmm. Don't don't go and say, yeah. But the other day I was here, you know, and a person right here. And there was a, a a thing to play a CD. And uh, this person who was new in the church wanted to show.
Senhor, somos, somos por cristãos somos em Espanha. E without thinking, he came and we're trying to put it to play. And the person who owns that thing jumped and screamed to this man and he said all kind of things, how dare you touch me? And don't you ask for permission for any and he, that person went on and on. And then the person says, Gee, I'm sorry, I didn't you know <laughs> and they said, Listen, I'm sorry. The time slide is useful for making long term observations. When studying process, we analyze process items, those providential events, the people and circumstances, special interventions, and inner life lessons that God, the God can be that can be God's way to of indicating leadership potential. Process items also develop the potential confirm the leadership role and move the emerging leader among God's appointed ministry members. And then it adds, adds, principles are different from both patterns and processes in that they, in that they identify foundational truths. So you have to learn to identify what is happening in your life. It is a process. Now, why I say that? <clears throat> have you noticed that you have a problem that you have tried to solve time and time again and you haven't been able to resolve? Always jump. Sometimes a different way to, to jump. Have you noticed that? Uh, you have tried every way and it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think that God is trying to say something to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is that the introspection is diverse? If we don't have a, a, a prior time about our lives uh, with God in, in regard to uh, this uh, personality problem which has always every, everything is going on in yeah. every Christian. I understand what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, let, let me tell you, uh, I only can talk about myself for myself. It is odd to me that everything that is happening to me, I'm using it today. The truth. Yeah. The more you get, the more. Yeah. The more. It is odd to me uh, that uh, I was almost murdered by my mother twice. Uh, I, it was hard for me to, that I, I couldn't love anybody. Yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't cry. Uh, I couldn't feel uh, you know, compassion for somebody. Or uh, somebody came and says, uh, you know, I have this problem. I say, oh, I don't want to hear it. I was going to have it. Come on, you be a man. Uh, and then, by the grace of God, God <coughs> sent this man that brought me the gospel. And I was transformed. Uh, I began to, beginning to understand that God had changed my heart. Literally. That I, that I, that I had had, I have had a spiritual surgery. And God had took away 
the strong heart that I have. Just like Ezekiel says, it put a heart that I could be sensitive to people's needs. I understand exactly what is pain. I know. I know exactly what deprivation really means. I know exactly what uh, desperation really means. I don't know if I told you about this guy, Jose, that uh, I am reading his leg. Probably I've already told you this, but and, uh, one day I came to the lobby of the, of the mission and really was thinking, you know, and he was always thinking, that, but you can kind of get accustomed to the smell, uh, especially when it rains. The, the rain, the water with the dirty clothes of a person. It's, it, you know, it's just a special smell, you know, and, and you get accustomed to that. But that day was really, and I was going around, you know, looking, because the chaplains of the chip of the mission had become accustomed, mm -hmm. and they became insensitive to the pain or the homeless. You see, when I say the chaplains, finally I came in, and by the by the door, was this man that I know him, his name was Jose. He said, Jose, is it you? Did you do it in your pants? Because that's very common. I thought that he has done his need in, in his pen. He said, I said, because I let's go to the shower and I give you new clothes. You clean clothes. He says, no, no, the chaplain says, it's not that. I said, so what is it? So he pulled his pants. And his leg was all oh, red. It was like coming, you know, and there was juices were coming from there, you know. And, yeah. And the smell was. And I said, oh, Sam, I said, what happened to you? Ask for help, says. And he said this to me, what for? So don't tell me that you have problems, you see? There, is, there are things in life that you're going to encounter as a, as a leader of this type of leadership that you're going to find that you didn't even know that existed. Yeah, we have a temper, that's a problem. Yeah, we have a resentment, that's a problem. But when it comes in another ways to become bitter, to the really, <coughs> don't ever try to become a leader if you have something like that. Please don't. Do yourself a favor and do a favor to others. A leader has to have not, a, not, not to be a perfect person, but a sensitive person to know that as he is imperfect, others are imperfect. Right. Yeah. And if he's going to surround himself with helpers that are also imperfect. Don't demand perfection from anybody, please. You will never find it. Mm -hmm. That is a secret for marriage also. Mm -hmm. My wife said that I'm imperfect. I don't believe her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, my wife is, is the way she is. She's a wonderful woman, but I think there are some things on her that... <laughs> <laughs>
and what pain really is. I am. Uh, I want to give you a homework, okay? I want to give you an idea and he say, uh, but why would you like to become a leader in the body of Christ? And why do you like to become a leader in the body of Christ? Always. Oh, sorry. Why? Yeah. Make sure that the ones why? who become a leader is lower than the ones. <laughs> Why do you want to become a leader in the body of Christ and why you don't want to become a leader? And why you don't? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next week, I promise you, I'm going to bring you some literature of uh, angelology. I wanted you to have it.